Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, finally with the follow-up to the ban announcement. This is the rebalance announcement for Alchemy, and these will be effective on January 27th. So since there's so many of these, I'm going to blow through them pretty quick. So I don't want to bury the lead here. Uh, the most important takeaway from this video is that they tweaked Divide by Zero, implying that Divide by Zero and the other two are still legal in Alchemy. Just let that sink in. Also, the nerf that they gave Divide by Zero is nothing. It is not going to do a damn thing. So all runes extra turn extravaganza is still legal in alchemy and they want people to play that format. I, I believe they had mentioned at one point, you've got to be kidding me. So they are really dedicated to fixing and banning absolutely nothing in alchemy. Now that said, they just tweaked like 19 cards. So let's get into that. First up, we got a Sararak, which we're about to fight in my D&D party. But dang it, I rolled a 100 on the size and weight for my character. So Chonk E period large, the most serious lore bard ever, is going to rip his head clear off and use it as a trophy. People keep asking about my D&D crew, but I mean, no matter how prepared you think you are, you are not ready for that level of nerd. Trust me. So what they changed on Ace the Lich here is uh, removed opponent's option to sacrifice a creature on the attack trigger. And they consider that an upgrade. And uh, yeah, I haven't really seen him played that much, so sure. So next up is Assemble from Parts. And uh, for all you graphics aficionados out there, embedded in the page at about 2 inches by 3 inches, so right around real life size, it's a 1474 by 2048 res, for some reason, 3 megabyte PNG file. And they're all like this. Let me just zoom and enhance, but without the enhance part. Yeah. Wizards and their dumb zoomers on their Macintosh computers made the number one mistake of web design. Don't upload something and then shrink it 10 to 1. Anyway, uh, what they wrote is completely incorrect, so I'm going to say what they actually changed. Uh, they changed the ability from three generic and one black to one generic and two black. Wow. Big difference. Uh, I could read the reasoning here because they actually wrote it for this one, but really just, oh, nobody's playing it. We want people to burn more wild cards on this stupid format that nobody's playing. So uh, Blood Rage Alpha increased the toughness from three to four. So now it's a four, four for four instead of four, three for four. Nah, dude, a four cost legendary werewolf. They should have made it a four, two and made it cost three. And then shortly after that, deleted it and not release it at all because we don't need another damn werewolf. Oh, pardon me. Wolf. Next up, Cloister Gargoyle. They lowered the cost and reduced the toughness. So they're not just going nuts with this, they're trying to be subtle. And I mean, there's you might say there's nothing subtle about changing like, what is it, 18 or 19 cards depending upon if you count Teferi? But I mean, that was what alchemy was. But it's really just a scam to burn wild cards, so that's why nobody's playing it. Also, they upped the power level and they're generally upping the power level of these cards. I mean, let me count real quick, hold on. 11 card upgrades and eight downgrades, or as they call them, adjustments. So Mr. Cloister here got 50% cheaper. I mean, it was three, now it's two. Like, that's no joke, but it's a zero three instead of a zero four. So it's a dungeon card. I mean, I found dungeons to be kind of fun, very decision heavy, very plan ahead heavy, real, real like experienced player, good decision equals win, you know, kind of stuff, which is a move in the right direction. So I don't really have a problem with this. What I do have a problem with is Triumphant Adventurer, but uh, well, this isn't that. Speaking of that, next up we got Dungeon Descent. So they removed Enters the Battlefield Tapped, and uh, it only costs one mana to activate. They're claiming it was four mana. Holy crap. I remember seeing this initially and saying, there is no way that people are going to pay four to, <laughs> and lose access to a legendary creature just to venture into the dungeon when you can't even do it during your opponent's end step. This card was a disastrous miss, and they've maybe made it playable and then closed her on top of it, but wow. Th yeah, this was overdue. Next up, Benedict Cumberbatch, I mean Eliwick Tumblestrom. The third Planeswalker ability is now negative six instead of negative seven. So, I mean, you can see how subtle these are and how easy to understand they are and how, you know, you might think, oh, okay, she can alt one entire turn earlier. While that's, you know, big, it's kind of not because she's still double green, still four costs, still four loyalty, still plus one, still minus two, still does the same thing. So it's not like they switched her from, you know, green to red, but that might be enough. The negative six might be enough where somebody would say, ooh, I cut that from my deck, but it might work now. I just wasn't getting that alt off and that was the whole point was to get her to her alt and I just can't defend her long enough. Oh, now it's negative six. So somebody might play not only that entire deck now or play it differently, but put her in their deck. 
So next up, Fate's Reversal. They lowered the cost. Uh, it is now one black instead of one black and a generic. So that's like huge. I will say from your graveyard to your hand for one plus venture in the dungeon, that is like value town and this is a common. Now with that said, in their defense, I have literally never seen this card played and it's allegedly from the D&D set. So I guess two was too much to ask. Oh, if you haven't caught on, some of these are like pure alchemy A set cards and some of these are like real cards from standard that they're tweaking. So next up, find the path. This is a, a land aura. It now adds two mana of any one color instead of just double green, which like that's actually huge. That pretty much fundamentally changes how the card works because it's now a ramping fixer instead of a ramping but locked down to green card. So it's still a common, it's still three, that's three's a little late to ramp anything. So I think they're targeting a whole different deck with this. I would have kept it at green and maybe made it, made it cost two, but that might be flirting with like a whole Hydroid Crisis situation. If, if you don't remember what that is and weren't playing back then, I will leave you in blissful ignorance of how bad that was because my gosh. Next up, Puppet Razor. It is now a 3-4 instead of 3-3, so the toughness went up by one. Okay, I mean, for four, it probably should be. And that is a pure alchemy card, and it's a mythic, so, you know, dabbling with that kind of stuff. Boy, you downgrade it with no compensation. People are talking about that. But luckily, this is an upgrade. Let's just say not all of them are. Next up, Precipitous Drop has been changed to a two cost instead of a three cost. Um, I did like this card. I, I think it was a little overcosted for what it did, so sure. But they're really pushing the dungeon stuff, and, like, here's the problem. Triumphant Adventurer is on this list. They now made him 2-1 instead of 1-1 on top of the other, what, four dungeon upgrades? You've got to be kidding me. This guy's an asshole. I can't stand him. You can't stop him, and the only thing holding him off was, like, well, at least he's only hitting for one. First Strike Death Touch. you got to be kidding me. I cannot believe they upgraded this card. That That is unforgivable. I hate this card. Before Midnight Hunt and Crimson Vow, this card was actually kind of on some people's radars for a ban. So naturally, they made it a 2-1 and then upgraded all of the other cards you could ever possibly want to run in Dungeon. Unbelievable. Huge mistake. Speaking of that, divide by zero. I mentioned it earlier. They're tweaking it, not banning it, which I assume mean all runes is uh, legal too. I think they actually tweaked that one as well. It did nothing. They tweaked Luminarch. That did nothing. So this now only learns, you only get the learn trigger if the target of the spell is a permanent with mana value four or less. Oh, so late game, you don't get the, the Swiss Army card out of your sideboard. Well, whoopity flippin' do. 100% of people running this card go get the land fetcher and just ramp so that they can get, you know, more mana for the turns cloning set up. Maybe this will stop somebody from grabbing the seven summoner, but they could just grab it early. I mean, this is just stupid. It really ought to just be banned. I mean, if they want alchemy to be that different than standard, that fragmented while being virtually identical and rotating with it, I, I don't get it. That's like two completely different directions to me. I don't know. So now we're hitting the downgrades. Fearsome Whelp, rules adjustment, now triggers on upkeep instead of end step and gains haste. Wait a minute, that's an upgrade. I thought they said these are, wait. Yeah, the first section was called card buffs and this is called card adjustments. I thought that was a bit of an odd term, but I thought they meant, you know, it wouldn't just continue to be buffs. What the hell? So you get the benefit earlier. Okay, this is an upgrade. I don't know what the hell it's doing in this section. Oh, wait, they justified it. Let's get to the bottom of this. We are looking to make the explosive starts with Fearsome Whelp easier to interact with. Changing the trigger from end step to upkeep will give decks an additional turn to profitably interact with Fearsome Whelp. Giving Fearsome Whelp haste is a small way to compensate and make it more relevant in combat. Oh, okay, so you do have to wait an entire other turn. Yeah, this thing was really something from what I heard. I mean, remember, a lot of the dragons in standard right now, so obviously alchemy as well, have haste. And that was the problem, is if you made them cost one less during your end step, well, then you would just drop them in on your opponent's turn. But you still had to pay for this. So I don't think this is the biggest change, and I don't think they went far enough. I think this card was just generally a mistake, and they're just going to have to admit it. Let's look at Hullbreaker Horror. This was extremely significant. Not one, Mr. Krabs here should have just been banned. Two, they removed this spell can't be countered. So now everyone playing blue can stop Hullbreaker Horror. Outside of a mirror match, who gives a tap dancing f And the answer to that is, well, let me just read the first sentence of their justification. Removing this spell can't be countered will make Hullbreaker Horror easier to interact with in both controlled mirrors and other blue decks. 
as if that second part exists. So no, actually it is just for mirrors. Literally nothing deeper than that. I've got an idea. Up the deck diversity so that there aren't any mirror matches instead of everybody just running this long drawn out I literally can't lose if I go past turn six control a thon horse shit. How about that, wizards? Next up, we got Inquisitor Captain. Uh, they added if you cast it and to the enters the battlefield ability. So I haven't played against this because I haven't touched alchemy and this is an alchemy only card, but uh, they're saying we're making it more difficult to overwhelm the board with Inquisitor Captain. <laughs> yeah, good. So Glass Pool Mimic. Yeah, I love that card. And Soul Herder. Yeah, okay. I see where they're going with that. You can just clone it. So they want you to actually legitimately cast it before you just flood the living crap out of the battlefield, which I believe is almost word for word what I said would happen when they introduced this card during the spoilers. I guess I'm smarter than wizards after studying the card for five seconds. Next up, Lear, the douchebag pirate wizard wannabe ass clown ruining everything. They added during your turn to the flashback ability. That is huge, and they might as well have just banned it. This card doesn't even function anymore. Okay, okay, it's still a hyper-powerful card, but nobody running it the way they were running it before is going to run it now. Not with during your turn added to it. Uh, it. You can't now, you know, just trampoline, trampoline, bounce, 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 everything during your turn and their turn. You know, in Standard and Alchemy, I would have just banned Mr. Krabs and Lear instead of adjusting them, but, uh... Yeah, this is, it's almost literally a 50% power down to Lear. But unless I'm running something with haste, it doesn't really matter when they bounce it, does it? I would have added opponent's spells can't be countered. But like I said, if I'm in control, I would have just banned the f***ing card. I despise this card. Oh, here, you'll get a little laugh out of this if you have a dark sense of humor and don't play alchemy. Otherwise, you're just going to punch your monitor. We are aiming to make Lear, Disciple of the Drown, less effective when combined with Fading Hope and Divide by Zero. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I have an idea for how to make it less effective with Divide by Zero. See if you can guess what it is. I'll give you a hint. Somebody else at Wizards already solved it today. Anyway, next up we got Sanguine Brushstroke. They removed the life gain portion from the Sacrifice Blood Token trigger. Yeah. Yeah, people are just running this in Meat Hook Massacre shutdown crap. No surprise there. Next up, Town Razor Tyrant. They added non-basic as a targeting restriction. I've got a targeting restriction for you. If you blow up a land, I'm going to punch you in the f***ing face. Same policy as if you turn one thought sees me when you go first. Land destruction should not exist. Period. The end. Over with. Moving on to the last one. Teferi Time Asshole. Before I even read what they did, let me read their justification. We are aiming to move Teferi Time Raveler away from a generically strong card to a specialized anti-control tool. He is definitely a tool. He is definitely not anti-control. So it now costs four instead of three. I mean, he was annoying on turn three, but he was annoying no matter what turn he came out. So, okay. Um, and he now has five starting loyalty instead of four. So that was a mistake. And the static ability, this is where they really changed it, says your opponents can't cast spells during your turn. Wait, I could have sworn in the other article where they announced they were unbanning him that, and, and the, the API that does the mouse over on the cards wasn't working very well and it was spotty, so maybe I got a bad version of the card. But I thought the change was he used to say that and now it says everything is limited to sorcery speed. I guess they just cannot cast anything during your turn, which there's already cards that do that, so okay. I think they actually did bring him down to a, an appropriate power level. It's just why bring him back at all? Was this really necessary? I mean... I, I don't disagree that they now made him an anti-control card. But if you just kind of zoom out and see the big picture for one second, which I am not surprised that Wizards missed again, what the hell other deck than a control deck runs to Fairy Time Raveler? What non-control deck runs white-blue in Historic? Spirits? All Flyers? That's it? I, I, I wouldn't know. I don't play Historic. You're just encouraging a control deck and then not letting other control decks interact with it. So you're actually promoting the amount of control decks by suppressing other control decks and making a mirror match even more miserable. So yikes. I feel like they thought they knew what they were doing and then did not think any further past it than that at all, which is just unbelievable. Oh, and then they said they really just wanted it to stop accidentally stopping cards like finale of promise and dread horror arcanist. Oh yeah. Wouldn't that be a shame? 
So will these 18 to 19 tweaks, depending upon how you count it, but for sure an Alchemy 18 and then Historic 1, okay, whatever, will these changes, and how widespread they are, and how, you know, about half of them went up, half of them went down-ish, will that actually solve the problem? And my answer is no, but for a very, very in-depth reason. So let's just jump on that for a second. That's a lot of changes all at once. That is not, let's tweak one tiny little thing and wait and see, okay? That's not, let's see if getting rid of Expedition Map stops, uh, what was it, Affinity or whatever in Popper? Oops, it's been six months and it didn't fix anything. Let's make another tiny little change? Come on. 19 cards at once? Sure, I welcome it. But what I don't welcome is the new power level and the fact that, uh, like, Divide by Zero and All Runes are not banned in Alchemy. It sounds like they aren't going to ban anything in that format. They're just going to try to tweak it out of existence until they just maintain this absolute tier one. So if they make an adjustment every month, I'll, I'll be honest with you, they might actually get there. But it's right smack dab in the middle of historic and standard constructed from a power level. Well, who wanted that? Who asked for any of that? And honestly, at the end of the day, the wild card usage is just out of control. It is too much money to ask of the average person, and that goes for people who've been playing since beta. Okay, people who just want to jump in like tomorrow, brand new to it, or have you know played paper on and off, and now they want to jump on arena. They start so far behind, they might as well just dump a couple hundred bucks into MTGO instead of arena. They'll get more for the money. It's just sad. They should have either made alchemy free and have it be a twice annual rotating standard where they kind of micromanage it, make it best of one only. So it's like the digital format for, you know, for, for non-serious quick match kind of people, or they should have uh, flipped it and made standard completely free all access or make historic or standard brawl all access so that people can jump in, build absolutely anything. But when they want to build, you know, a format that people actually play like standard constructed or historic, then they got to burn wild cards, but they could have gotten a few wild cards from playing Brawl for free. They really should do that. They need a permanent all-access format on Arena to get new players to just give them something to play. I'm telling you. You might say, oh, but they get the welcome decks for free and all the tutorial stuff and some free packs. Not good enough. Not even close. And really, that's that. So trying to you know patch up Alchemy and push it and make it work, it's just going to fall flat on its face. What they need to do is something a little bit more clever, a little bit more... Uh, here, have, have the first one free. Here, have have this limited, you know, kind of like an old school RuneScape. Oh, you can go here, but you can't go to the members area. Oh, you got to actually pay and not be a free user if you want an experience outside of this tiny little box. But if you don't have that tiny little box, people just are like, whoa, it takes like 200 bucks to build one deck. I'm out. Day one, I'm out. It's just too hard to get into Arena, and now Alchemy is just worse. So to go further in the direction of, oh, just burn more wild cards... No, because more people are quitting the game than joining, so what you need is the opposite. You want a format that burns less wild cards because the people you're trying to attract don't have any. I mean, this is simple math. So yeah, that's how you fix it uh, at the end of the day. So hopefully they do something like that. Otherwise, uh, yeah, nobody's touching alchemy. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.